there are some lies in our science books. Taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. We're going to cover some of that tonight. Perception is being managed. We are being steered and guided by a hidden hand. The whole world has been duped by the media that is not real. <laughs> smart thinking, possible time traveler, smart thinking. That night, boom, contact memory. And then, do, Alex, if you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I've lost my touch with the baby. Experts are suggesting that we're in a golden age of shape-shifting reptilian sightings. Now, why is that? I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research. It was most definitely not capable of melting steel. Then I would be a crackpot if I thought that was that was the, the case. Thought that was that was the, the case. Welcome to the Hypothetical Institute, a podcast about conspiracies. My name's Luke. I'm Salt. I'm Cam. Gentlemen, how are we? Good. Pretty good, thank you. How are you, Cam? I'm wonderful, thank you. Happy New Year, boys. Excellent. Happy New Year. Did everyone have a restful holiday period? Yeah. Yeah, All rested up and ready to dive deep into some conspiracies, Robbo. Hmm. In this, the year of coming to kick ass and chew bubblegum and being all out of bubblegum with your mates. I like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm also, you know, I had a great period too, thanks for asking. Um, I feel like that's that's something already. We can't, isn't that something already? Yeah, well, we talked about it the other day and that's what we said was going to be the year. Ah, uh, Okay. Yeah, try and keep up, mate. All right, cool. That's why you probably. That's why it's probably familiar because we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just a bit of a bit of background. So I think regular listeners will know that every year we declare it to be the year of something. Robbo wanted this year to be the year of getting paid. What a capitalist dog! <laughs> Although I am with him on that. Like, yeah. Can it, be, can it be the other thing plus the year of getting paid? Cam, I. Uh... You're probably the only one with any sort of stable income um, <laughs> out of the podcast, and and I haven't had a stable income for six years now. <laughs> In fact, it's negatives uh, right now. So it'd be quite nice to go ooh, buy myself a little treat. <laughs> Capitalist running dog. <laughs> so this week we're talking about Ancient Apocalypse on Netflix. Ooh, not sponsored. Uh, <laughs> I feel like they'd be trying to shut us down. Um, I like how we're also talking about this. Well, uh, well, you know, a good month and a half after the zeitgeist. Yeah. Yeah. So right. we had Christmas to get through and stuff. Yeah. Did you guys watch the whole series? I've just I've watched the first two. The first two. Okay. I don't think that you need to watch more than that. I watched five and I was like, all right. It's the I same. get the yeah, I get the feeling that every episode's basically going to be the same thing. Yeah, yeah, but in a different country, a different culture. Yeah, yeah, the, it gets flimsier as he goes, and then right. I I feel like anyone that's ever watched any of these sorts of things knows exactly what the talking points are. But Cam, did you want to go a little a rundown of what it is? Well, so the show's called Ancient Apocalypse. It's on Netflix. It's hosted by a guy called Graham Hancock, uh, who is a Nepo daddy. His, uh, his son is the head of factual programming at Netflix. Right. Yeah. Uh, head of unscripted TV, mm. I think is his title. This TV seems very scripted. <laughs> I do feel like it's the kind of thing he could, 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 would commission. Um, is this a reverse Nepo baby? Yeah, I think it, it's a, he's a Nepo daddy. Yeah, <laughs> he's um, a Nepo daddy. 
This is a shoey, first shoey of 2023. Thinking about him being a Nepo daddy, you know, like the the, the idea of making up a guy and getting mad at him? Yes. I made up the idea of a guy who pronounces it Nepo baby, and I got really mad about that. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Cam, for listeners that aren't awfully online, what's a Nepo baby? Oh, I wish I'd have said Nepo baby, damn it. <laughs> ah, say it again, do it again, cut that. And a Nepo baby is just uh, someone whose like, parents are in show business uh, and so then they've you know benefited from a little bit of nepotism at some point. Mm. It's, just, it's just the new word for nepotism. I, I, I have to say, with the Nepo baby discourse, I've enjoyed some of the, like, the, the spin-offs where people were like, because there was a big article that came out about all of these people in showbiz whose parents are in showbiz, mm. which is not that new a concept, but anyway. It's pretty much all of showbiz, right? Yeah. <laughs> How it works. The, the business of show, it's of the business of who you know and not what you know, <laughs> famously. Yeah. Uh, but I did see someone being like, Oh, they should do the the Nepo Baby article for journalism. It's like, yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of journalists whose parents were in journalism, but I think we might be overestimating how lucrative the field of journalism is. It's do do the Nepo babies for carny folk. <laughs> do it for any industry, and, and chances are you're going to find a lot of people who follow do them. The- <laughs> Do the Nepo baby for glaziers. <laughs> anyway, yeah. there's your first showy for the year. Cool. So uh, yeah. I wish there was a damn it, there's a glass ceiling joke in there that I couldn't get. To. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Graham Hancock, he's this uh guy, he is an an archaeologist. I think he sort of uh Longs for the uh, the olden days of archaeology, the uh, Indiana Jones days. Yep. So mm-hmm. we all. Before, yep. ar- before archaeology got woke. Yeah. Before it got full of nerds. And the basic gist of this show and, like, seven books that this guy's written are that there was an, an ancient civilization that was significantly more advanced than uh, other ancient civilizations. Mm-hmm. They were this was like pre the Ice Age. The Ice Age has come. There's been a bit of an ancient apocalypse and they've almost all been wiped out except for a few. And so then when uh, humanity has, you know, risen like a phoenix from the ashes of the old world, there's been a few of these old advanced civilization people wandering around and rocking up to people's places and being like, you know what would look good in here? A pyramid. Pyramid. And you know what? I can teach you how to make it. Yeah. And the <laughs> ancient, the other ancient people are like, oh, that's great because we could never have worked this out. Yeah. Uh, rocks <laughs> on top of each other? That that required an advanced brain. The ancients with the full sky... Uh, and bright stars would never have thought to point things at stars without the wisdom of a sea creature. Oh, do they are there sea creatures involved? Well, they come from the ocean, and that that's kind of his his ongoing thing. Is there was a big flood, which uh, what was that called? The um, younger Dryas, which I think is like. When the Ice Age ended and everything flooded, yeah, um, a, a big change, basically. I don't know the science. I'm not a nerd. Um, Cosmic flooding event. Yeah, and, and wiped everyone out, and then the remnants of that civilization um, returned from the ocean, and, and his sort of precedent or his reasoning is all of the all these civilizations throughout humanity through history – have got myths about someone coming from the ocean and and do you know teaching them or, or you know something appearing uh, from the ocean. All the examples he gave are all quite different. 
<laughs> and yep. not really the same. Um, the the most uh, obvious one for me was um, he talks about Maui, uh, the Polynesian um, or the New Zealand Aotearoa one, where he fished up. He used the South Island to fish up the North Island, basically. Right. Um, and so this was the same as, as the one in Mexico where um, a giant appeared from the ocean and started teaching them um, how to build pyramids. Hmm. Like, Is he the one that came riding with two serpents? I think so. Well, was that him or was that someone else? That was, yeah, that was in the Mexican one. Yeah, yeah. that was the second episode. So, like, you know, he he keeps on going on and... Every episode, he, he comes up with a new one and says, "It's the same." Those aren't the same, though. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not even remotely the same, and they happen at vastly different historical times. Mm. Like he never said, and that's kind of the, the the format of the show was he'd give the first maybe thirty minutes of like credible science. Um, looked great. It was a really cool thing to look at. Mm. The filming, the good drone shots some cool structures that I'd never seen before. I enjoyed seeing that. And then he just goes into the cook stuff and then immediately like all the people he's interviewing change a little bit to someone else. It's no longer the archaeologist he interviewed uh, and dates and, you know, facts start just kind of drifting away. Yeah, there's um, more There's more interviewees who have like the something of Atlantis author <laughs> yeah. under the name. I really liked in the second episode, the guy who was just hanging out in the Mexican pyramid tunnels. Oh yeah. It was like some archeologist guy. He's like talking about at one point, he's like, yeah, and there's this room with uh, all this stuff in it. And they found all this stuff in there. And he goes, and has anyone been back in there? And he goes, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think so. It's like, will you hang out down there? Yeah. Why don't you just go find <laughs> it and have a look? Nah, um, no one's been back there. I think that was the one. I don't know if I noted it down, but like the, oh, uh, yeah, that was, I think that was the one. Um, I was reading an article in Slate where he, he's first up, he's talking to the guy who's an archaeologist and then suddenly the guy he's talking to is Marco Vigato, who was the Atlantis book guy, who is just a, one of the racist guys. Like straight, his his book was all about you know the great white people that built the earth, um, and but he kind of conflates the two and doesn't really say that they're any different. Mm. Um, interviews someone serious, then flips it to a, a racist. Because I th- I think Graham Hancock originally was on team racism, like not we've you know we've talked about this before with like the ancient civilization stuff, uh, especially the ones that predate indigenous cultures where there's definitely a racist edge to why some people push it. Mm. And then there's other people that push it because that's just like what they reckon. And it's not, might not necessarily be because they're like pushing a white supremacist ag- agenda to like delegitimize indigenous, uh, enterprises. Mm. Mm. I feel like to give the benefit of the doubt to Graham Hancock, I think he was probably in that camp. And in later years, he has like pivoted to it being like some sort of ancient indigenous civilization now. Right. Yeah, he certainly got it in some of his books, or at least one of his books. Um, he was on the alien gear for a while as well. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a whole book about this being aliens called something like Mars. Mars Mystery by Graham Hancock. Right. Um, uh, the subtitle of that is um, A Warning from History That Could Save Life on Earth, which... What's the warning? Well, that was kind of the theme of this one as well, was it kept on sort of coming back to, you know, are they trying to warn us of something? What do they know that they're telling us through the pyramids? Well, yeah, I mean, this is the thing they didn't know. So, like, if we're if we're saying that there was an ancient apocalypse, uh, if I was those guys, I would be like, we need to warn people about apocalypses. Mm. Like, we need to warn them about uh, the ice age. Yeah, but mm. there's no, there's like, 
so <laughs> the answer to that is build a bunch of pyramids in Graham Hancock's mind. Mm. <laughs> like, you know, like uh, when people set out to like, uh, oh, how, how should we warn people about nuclear waste in the future? And we'll yeah. come up, we'll come up with like sculptures that tell you like, you yeah, know, no great deeds are remembered here. A lot of thought went into it, but mm. I don't think <laughs> anything about a pyramid says, watch out for the ice age. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Was it just like, hey, watch out in case it floods again, just build something kind of high yeah. so you can all get on top of it? You guys should have taught us how to build flood walls, not pyramids. Because yeah. with the like the alien thing, like there's a lot of, like if you if you follow the trajectory of the people who are like, yeah, there was a, like an ancient civilization who got wiped out in the floods, blah, 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 blah. There's only a very, very short jump to the people who also think that ancient civilization was from, like, Sirius. <laughs> yes. Like, alien. Like, there's, that, there's a, the the little, f- the line between those two theorists is very, very thin. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty uh, circular Venn diagram of those two things. Yeah. A lot of crisscrossing. I think also, if the idea is that, uh, we're giving you a warning about ice ages and the mending build build high. Like some of the pyramids are proper pyramids. They're like, let's get a whole bunch of rocks and let's put them together, stack them into a big triangle. And then some of the pyramids he looks at are like, well, we've got a hill. Let's put some rocks on it. Yeah. See that in the first episode, this is like, I okay. Here's confession time, boys. Mm-hmm. I really, really enjoy theories like this, right? Absolutely. I fucking love it. I love the idea of a ancient civilization that got wiped out, except like eight of them, and they were like, let's just go out and fucking teach the world some shit. Yeah. And then we'll go, then we, we'll fucking, our time's done, we're gone. Right? That's I a, love that a, kind of shit. That's a sick morning cartoon in the 90s. Like, right, oh. it is. And yeah. and it wouldn't, like, you'd probably, you and, like, two other people saw it and you'd always be trying to remember the name of it. Kind yeah. of, kind of. Exactly. Serious. That's exactly how me and Mike from So High to Met over a, a cartoon yeah. that only two of us remembered. Yeah. What I'm was not even cartoon? joking. That's exactly the story. <laughs> what was the cartoon? Uh, Robo Story. It was a French-Japanese collaboration cartoon. From the eighties, it's really good. Bad little girl who sneaks onto a rocket ship, and the rocket ship takes off and crash lands on a planet full of robots. The French like good, were good robots fr- and bad robots. The French were pretty big in animation in that era, weren't they? Yeah, and and, and the Belgians. Let's not discount the Belgians, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I feel like they led that. Such good cartoons. They led that drift. Let's bring back the French era of cartoons. Yeah. I mean, when you watch them now, the animation's pretty shit. But, like, when you were a kid in the 80s, it was f- glorious storytelling. Um, yeah, that looks pretty fun. I'm just looking at some stills of it. Yeah. But um, what? where it really quickly his whole theories and stuff quickly fell apart for me was, and you guys have to tell me if I'm, if I'm I've got the science of this completely wrong, all right? Mm. So he's in, uh, where was the first one? It was like in Indonesia or somewhere, somewhere yeah, yeah. Southeast Asian. Indonesia. In Indonesia. So he's there and there's like all these basalt volcanic like pillar things of stone that were naturally formed and they used to build some stuff, some walls and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So he's on this hill that's covered in those in a, and you can see the rough, roughly how they used to be a bit like rooms and buildings and stuff, but it's all like disheveled and fallen down and stuff. And he's like, yo, well, you know, this, this was a, probably a pyramid, blah, 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 blah. And he's going on about it. Right. And then they take all these core samples and they're like, okay, so 10 meters down, we find evidence of a civilization doing some stuff here. Further down, we find more. And then they're like, and like 40 meters down or something, we found, Evidence of civilization being in this spot from like, you know, 
10,000 BC. This, this is going to, this would blow science out of the water if they did further study on it and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> if the evidence of the people who made these pyramids is 40 meters under the ground, why are all the rocks from the pyramids on the surface? Should they not be buried? It's not like, mm. like you watch Time Team, right? And they <laughs> yep. dig like a meter down and they go, oh, look, here's a tiled Roman four. Because like over the centuries, shit lands on the earth, right? And the ground gets higher. Yes. So they have to dig down for stuff. They don't like walk onto a farm and just see this like elaborate tiled road on the surface and go, oh, let's dig down a meter. Oh, it's Roman. They have, to, they have to dig down to find the road. I think part of the problem is that, so they, they take core samples from the hill mm. slash pyramid and they, cause they can, they can see from like, I think sonar imaging that there's like all of these hollows. Yeah. Uh, which must be rooms, but it can also be just hollow <laughs> spaces. Yeah. Which is something that you get in hills. Uh, and they, t- I think that it's just like soil samples, and they're like the soil down here is this many years old. So it's it like is. if it's, it's <laughs> all done, there's that old everywhere on the planet. If those are rooms, then that's saying something, right? But if they're just holes in the ground, <laughs> it doesn't really say anything at all. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was just confused at like, well, the pyramids wouldn't be. But even still, if there were rooms down there 20,000 years ago... They should have left all their stuff in there. The pyramids wouldn't be on the surface, uh, on top of 20,000 years of shit landing on the surface of the Earth. The pyramids would be buried, right? Yeah. <laughs> if they were made by people that long ago. Yep. Yep. You got a point there, Salty? But yeah, he... Um... The other thing that happens in this show is there's qu- quite a bit. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, the other thing that happens in this show is there's quite a bit of uh, him bitching about archaeologists. Yeah. I think that's my favourite bit of the show. <laughs> it's, um, it gets a bit repetitive. It's, I've got some quotes here. A mm-hmm. quote. Uh, the extremely defensive arrogant and patronizing attitude of mainstream academia is stopping us from considering that possibility. Um, he also keeps on saying the so-called experts. Mm. <laughs> he says that multiple times. Um, yeah. He, he's just basically just angry at archaeologists while using everything they've ever done as evidence for, to support mm. his theories. Mm. I am. Um, I'll make two points. One is I don't know if everyone on the production of the show was on his team, because there was a bit in the second episode where he's like whinging about uh, academics, and they flashed things up on the screen that people have said about him, like these theories are ludicrous. They're like this guy's an idiot. <laughs> it's like the text on the screen. Um. Yeah, but the other thing is he's like, oh. The main, like mainstream archaeology, can't handle this stuff because it would just like blow their whole world apart. And I feel like any sort of academic science, if there was an opportunity to just blow everything up and have to start from scratch, especially like archaeology, where we've found heaps of stuff already, <laughs> mm-hmm. like wouldn't that just be a huge money spinner? Mm. For archaeology, because it's not like it's not like people are going to be like, "Oh, you were wrong about it. You were wrong about pyramids. We're going to take back all the money we gave you." It's going to be you're going to be out financing new expeditions. Yeah, I watched. Um, I I don't watch all of it. I skipped through a debate with uh, Graham Hancock on Joe Rogan. He's a, I think he's a frequent Joe Rogan guest, as is pretty obvious from mm. his content. Um, with the founder, I think it is, of, of the Skeptic magazine, um, the Skeptic Society and founding publisher of Skeptic magazine, um, Michael Shermer, 
and sort of Hancock was like, you know, oh, there's, you know, archaeologists thought that that uh, people weren't on this part of the world at this time, and then and now we've proven they were. And this guy Sherm was like, yeah, we have, yeah. <laughs> and we're all happy about that. <laughs> like that doesn't disprove everything else. Um, and he, yeah, he and Sherman makes the same points of view. Um, Cam of like, yeah, everyone would be really excited if there was, if there was new discoveries. And one of the kind of key points, and something that we've talked about on the show of in the past, of like, we just we come from these place where we assume that people that are essentially like us, or that you know, as close to us as you can ever get. Um, species wise, as in the, the evolution of us, the very first start of us, we assume they're idiots and they can't possibly like put rocks on a rock mm. <laughs> or point something at the sun that's like clearly, you know, the only thing in the sky. Or in one case, um, I can't remember which side it was, but there's, you know, the, things were pointing at Sirius, the dog star, the brightest star in the sky. Um, and <laughs> the big bright thing in the sky. Yeah, the big yeah and in that episode, um, Hancock was kind of saying, you know, oh, it sucks that we've got all this light pollution because we can't see all these cool things that uh, our ancestors would have seen. But how did they ever think to point it at that thing? <laughs> like he's he's made the point that how amazing it would have looked, and then been like, but these fucking idiots. They could never have worked it out without some sort of sea creature appearing and telling them to do it. Yeah. Um, and and again, Sherman was kind of Sherman. Sorry, was kind of echoing that and saying, you know, we're learning more about about hunters and gatherers, and and they were actually quite capable of organising into, um, you know, into societies earlier than we thought. And also they had far more free time than we do now. Like they had heaps of free time up their sleeve because they didn't have to bloody commute yeah. or, or do Zoom meetings to get their food. Um, you know, they, they just caught their food and ate it, really. They had plenty of time up their sleeve. They didn't have Twitter. Yeah. Left, left a lot of time for rock stacking. They have heaps of time for rock stacking. Yeah. Also, and, and like... You've been pumping the tires of the ancient peoples a bit, but also in terms of like pointing things at stars, if you build enough pyramids around a globe, some of them are going to point at a star because all of the stars are in the same direction. <laughs> yes. Ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, no, so the one that he was talking about was like these doorways. I think it was the Malta. It's an island in Malta that has lots of temples all facing the same way. Mm. And he, he hypothesized, or hypothesized or worked out that because the earth wobbles as it's spinning, where the stars would be in alignment, where the dog star would be in alignment, or Sirius, at one point they had to keep rebuilding the the temple so the doors would always show the star. But that just fails to even take into account how stars work because mm. they move every day and every night. Yeah. Like, of course, if, you, if I put a doorway anywhere, you know, facing somewhere, at some point it's going to face a star in the sky that, like, it just doesn't prove anything. It just proves that they just... Built their doorways in different places. Yeah. He also he he had a real bee in his bonnet about like mainstream archaeologists. They just dismiss myths. Mm. There's all there's all of these myths around the world, and mainstream archaeologists are like, oh, that's just a story. Yeah. And it's like I don't know if that's true. <laughs> there's like a whole field of study into where these myths come from. And also, for the most part, it's not really in the archaeologist's remit. Like, once they find something, then yeah, you'd work out where that came from. But you, they're not they're not starting at the myth. Yeah, mm. he's they're starting at the Jones. end point. Yeah, he's starting at the end point and going, "Oh, how did this happen?" 
these mm-hmm. idiots back in the day could never have built this. How do I how do I prove that? And then he's going out to find proof rather than going, what have we found and what does this show? Yeah. Also, yeah, like... Less exciting, right? Like... To, yeah, yeah. To just go with what you find. Like... Yeah, it's boring. It's like, it'd be a different movie if Indiana Jones just dug up the Ark of the Covenant and didn't have to fight Nazis to get a medallion and put it in a hole and shoot sun laser beams to find where it was buried. Yeah, in the real world, he needs to find the laser beam hole first and work yeah. backwards. Yeah. I also, I've found it, he, part of his thing is like, there's all of these stories around the world of like the guy showing up with all of the answers. Mm. And it's like, what are the chances that like this story would happen all around the world? It's like, I can maybe have a look all around the world right now. Like, all, like, there are, it's, you don't have to go back to the ancient world to be like, oh, you know, the story of the one guy that had all the answers that showed up. It's like, it's a constant refrain throughout history. We invent a guy every, every like, all the time we're inventing guys. Hmm. One of the examples, I, ca- I can't pronounce it, uh, Czech Tezkod single. Uh, the Mexican place, uh, apologies to anyone, who, yeah, everyone for that one, uh, spelled T-E-X-C-O-T-Z-I-N-G-O. Um, and he uses that as an example of like one of the ancient buildings. Uh, you know, how do you possibly build that? Um, it was built in the 15th century. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's built very recently. And uh, I was listening to this this podcast um uh, what was the guy's name? Stefan Milo. Uh, it's on YouTube as well. It's actually he does he does a really good long breakdown of each episode. But he kind of makes the point of like imagine going to other places or, or places in European or white culture built in the fifteenth century and being like, how did they ever build this? <laughs> how how do, how do they build the Vatican? You know, like you know these these buildings that we're really familiar with because they're built by by cultures that people might see as not as advanced. There's no way they could possibly have done it. It has to be has to be influenced from somewhere else. Yeah. In fairness, we uh, we have talked about the Tartarian mud flood theory where you have people like looking at Flinders Street Station and be like, how did they do it? <laughs> that is true. There must have been some ancient civilization. Um, but I mean, the other thing is, there's so many like maybes, ifs, like if this was the case, maybe this happened. Like he couches everything so much because at the end of the day, there's like no evidence for anything. No. But- <laughs> it's like you've got all these pyramids. It's like, well, there should be some other evidence. Besides a pyramid, you should be able to find a spoon. <laughs> the one, his, his actually countenance to that on the Rogan podcast was, um, you know, these are temples. Why would they bring food or waste there? Why would they, you know, because most of these things were, were temples or burial sites. So why would they even have food there? All right, we'll go up the road to where people's houses would be. Where are the houses? Yeah. <laughs> also, people eat in temples all the time. You go to you go to church in here, and you get a little snack, hmm. you get a little snack, a little, and a little drink, a little picky and drinks, a little wafer. <laughs> um, you know, food, food, and 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 is just central to religion everywhere, right? Hmm. It's it's not like all these religions decided not to have food. Um, part of the, one of the things as well, missing in evidence is there's no like DNA proof Mm. as in we've kind of proven that I think Polynesian people had some intermingling with the Americas, like there must've been some trade happening, um, a, cause there's a sweet potato or, or what do you call that? Sweet potato? Yeah. 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 Um, that Kumar? started in, yeah, Kumar, yeah. Um, 
started in in the Americas and now it's all through Polynesia and and plus DNA of people you can work out where their ancestors are and there is DNA from both cultures found in both cultures. People do it when they meet. Uh, and like if a sexy if a dude rolls in and he's got a right like two serpents and he's like, I'm here to teach you things, of course someone's gonna bang him. Mm. It's the first thing you do. Like, God. And there's no evidence of that. Yeah. No evidence of any banging. I mean, the other thing is there's there's a few claims he makes where it's like, you know, mainstream archaeologists say there's no chance that, like, Neanderthals came to Malta is in one of the episodes. Mm. And it's like, well, no, what they say is that there's no evidence. Mm. They don't say there's no chance. Of course they mm. cruise past Malta. <laughs> Mm. I think I looked that one up and when I watched it. I watched it when it came out. Um, but I'm pretty sure there was, like, evidence for it as well. <laughs> like there's – because it was connected to Europe at the time of the Neanderthals mm. uh, and then it became disconnected. But I'm pretty sure there was, like, uh, some reasonable theories or at least theories, sorry, that, that it, yeah, of course – um, well, because I think he, he's he got some, like, Neanderthal teeth they found on Malta. Mm. And, like, but so part of his thing, though, is he's like, oh, this archaeologist said, uh, no, these these aren't Neanderthal teeth. And then, like, down the track, we discovered that they were. It's like mainstream archaeology got it wrong. It's like, yeah, but that guy was, like, in 1911. <laughs> <laughs> and also, and so, also mainstream archaeology archaeology isn't trying to pretend that it's didn't happen now as well. Yeah. But also down the track, a mainstream archaeologist was like, Oh no, I think those are Neanderthal teeth. Yeah. Uh, like, no, I think that was actually, sorry, that, that was a, um, citizen geologist, I think, or it wasn't actually, a from academia. So someone was like so convinced that they they just put a lot of resources and their own time into proving mm. the theory. Uh, so yeah, th- that that happens like sixty, seventy years later. <laughs> yeah, and then a little bit like later on from that, some some other person's like, oh, I've looked at these. I think there's another explanation. <laughs> yeah, so maybe they're not Neanderthal teeth, but it's like nobody ever said Neanderthals. Never went to Malta. <laughs> um, yeah, the that's and that, it's that uh, episode of Always Sunny. I don't know if you guys have seen it, where uh, science is a liar sometimes. Um, look it up on YouTube uh, for people that haven't seen it, and it's it's essentially what this show is, where it's like you know. They thought a uh, scientist back in the day, so and so, the most you know, renowned scientist, thought the the Earth was flat. Turns out he was a bitch. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's it's that kind of if science got it wrong historically, then all science is wrong, and we can't trust it. As opposed to what most scientists would, uh, you know, if we got it wrong, we need to find out the right answer. Yeah, and it's like mostly the people proving that they got it wrong were other scientists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was watching on the, the Rogan, the little bit of the Rod, Rogan one I saw uh, about the hunter-gatherers and, and the guy Shermer says, you know, we, we were wrong about that and we can prove it. Um, and Rogan kind of interrupts and he's like, wow, what – what if we can't prove it? And what if it was ancient civilizations? You know, how would it be something we can't prove? And the guy's just like, what? <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you talking about? And it's that kind of Rogan steamrolling of, of you know, really confident of like, you know, it could be anything. Who knows? And the guy's like, but we kind of do know. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, they also got in a big argument on that episode where, the skeptic guy was saying 40, 30, 40, 30 or 40,000 years ago, we had quite elaborate cave paintings. 
um, and some that had sort of 3D perspective and, and were really interesting. And, you know, kind of that's kind of evidence that that, that hunter-gatherers at the time could, could think kind of quite, um, uh, you know, in ways that we didn't expect them to think. And Rogan's like, oh, so you're likening that to them building a, you know, a giant Neolithic or megalithic structure, like they're not the same thing. And he, Rogan can't comprehend that this guy is saying over a period of 20,000 years, that kind of brain could probably build a, a structure out of stone. Mm. Like 20,000 years later, they could probably do that. And Rogan's like, why are you comparing the same thing? They're, they're not the same. Do you think are you some sort of idiot that thinks a painting's the same as a building? And the guy's like, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying at all. Oh, Rogan. But it's like I, I do I have to keep coming back to the this idea that uh pyramids, which are just rocks on top of other rocks, are like this amazingly complicated idea <laughs> that yeah. I, I, I you'd have to be from Mars or Atlantis or whatever to be able to comprehend. It's like no you can watch you can give a small child blocks and they will make a pyramid. <laughs> You give it, a baby can do it, so I'm sure that people in the past could do it too. They can happen by just by mistake. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of rocks can fall down on and make a little structure. <laughs> but yeah, like the Indonesian one, he's like all of these rocks are like from another area. It's like yeah, we grabbed some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they weren't big rocks either. One of them, I can't remember which one it was, he was standing there going like, oh, it's huge structure you couldn't comprehend. And it was like two stories high. Yeah. And they had him for, you know, for perspective. It's like, oh, that's, I can comprehend that. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, I, if I was super, like, ancient, I could still comprehend that because there's trees that size. Mm. There's mountains much bigger. <laughs> um. The some of them are slightly bigger than the hill they're on top of, so like it doesn't take a huge amount of comprehending. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go all the way up the hill and just what if we put something slightly smaller on top of it? And one of the, I think it was maybe episode four or five. He's talking about like a shark island, and there's this kind of structure under under the ocean, which is just clearly rocks that have formed from sea currents like undeniably it doesn't look like a structure at all mm -hmm. he's like who, who built this structure it's a wall what if we draw some lines and you know make it look more like a structure now do you see and then he goes inland like a river nearby and in the middle of the river there's an island that's shaped like a shark and uh, kind of and that was evidence for something, but he never really made it clear. And I, I kind of wondered why he focused on the island shaped like a shark and not the one in the Great Barrier Reef that's um, shaped like a heart, a little heart-shaped island. He never talked about that. <laughs> Just shows he's coming from a place of anger and not love. That's all I have. So uh, if that's an ancient apocalypse, we've had it. Um, yeah. I can recommend the Stefan Milo YouTube video uh, if you really want to get into to details. I also recommend watching it. Mm. Maybe maybe pi maybe pirate it. Well, if you've already got Netflix, but um, there's so much better stuff to watch. You could watch Indiana Jones. Is it on Netflix? I don't know. I watched the first Indiana Jones for like the first time the other day. Me too. I think first time for both of you. Well, for the first time in a while. No, Have you no. never seen a cam? First time ever. I think I'd seen like bits and pieces of it, like on like rainy days at school, like right. seen it, seen a bit of it. And like when it was on, like parts of it when it was on TV, I guess when I was a kid, but I'd never seen the whole thing. Right. Had you assumed you'd seen it? Uh, no, I think that I realized that I hadn't, but. Then watching it, there's like so many iconic scenes, yeah. Where it's like, oh, I, I must, I must have watched it. But then there's parts of it where it's like, no, I clearly you never watched this. 
Indiana Jones, though, I think at the time that that came out, he was supposed to be like really woke as a archaeologist. As everything right. belongs in a museum. Yeah, I think, but both at the time of the, uh, like at the time it's set in, and the maybe even the time the movie came out, that was yeah. maybe the woke position for an archaeologist to take. But he, I, he was the good. <laughs> he was the good guy for uncovering these things. Yeah, but in like 2023, he's such an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> and there is. Also, there's the scene where uh, he's talking to, like, a 26-year-old who he had an affair with 10 years previous. <laughs> and it's like, that didn't age well. And then I looked it up, and apparently when they were, like, writing it, they're like, should we make it? Yet? So she was 11 when they had the affair? And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, let's make it 16. So it's not weird. <laughs> Different times. Um, I watched Back to the Future 1 and 2 the other day. Nice. Back to the Future 1, much superior to 2. Reckon? Yeah, absolutely. Agree to disagree. Have you watched them recently? Yeah. Then you're wrong. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, I recommend going back to back, and it's pretty stark how, how much better 1 is. Maybe because two, we're, two just had two had the hoverboard and like I think that blinded us as kids. Like, oh, hoverboard, like what what could possibly be better than this? As adults, what could possibly better be better is Back to the Future One. Maybe because we're living in the dystopian nineteen eighty five, it's a bit different. Cut, uh, cuts a bit close to home. Robbo, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Short Shore Brewing, at Ten Lindhurst Street, Westport. It's the only place to get me. Where can they get you, mate? Uh, you can get me at uh, twitch.tv slash the salt. And you can get me at Sexenheimer on Twitter. And uh, you can also find us. We are on patreon.com slash hypothepod. Thank you to Tammy, our quick $33 sponsor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, boys, just want to send a. A shout out and a thank you to Menace Bunny, our listener, who we caught up and had a lovely dinner with recently. Uh, she sent us a mm. Christmas card. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. It arrived way after Christmas, but we got it. And it's very nice. Thank you very much, Menace Bunny. Uh, I, enjoy, I enjoyed the food that I ate. I don't want to be too specific to give away our potential locations, but enjoyed the food and the company. Really, yeah. A really good evening. Yeah, I enjoyed... Two thirds of the company. All right. Well, see you later. Bye. Don't worry about a thing. Except if all our world leaders are alien reptilians. I said, don't worry about a thing. Except maybe the fluoride in our water supply contains mind altering. Drugs. Don't worry about a thing. Except whether or not Port Arthur was a false flag operation in which to disarm Australia. I said, don't worry about a thing. I accept. You can definitely hear John Lennon say, I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Fields forever. Ooh, don't worry. Except not only did Bush do 9-11, but he also keeps the planes out in Area 51, which let's not forget where all the aliens are. Don't worry about a thing, except Donald Trump is clearly a woman and you're just blind if you can't see them. Why don't you open your eyes?